ma'am, and this is Akshat. I have a question for you. You mentioned the fact that if water is made available to the land, where only uh, supposedly one crop is growing, then you mentioned the fact that if water is provided to that land, then two to three crops can be grown. But uh, supporting the point which Mr. Spector mentioned, that uh, on a daily basis, 100,000 people are becoming middle class <coughs> right now. So how to cope up with it? That means the percentage of farmers is uh, getting lower day by day. How to cope up with it? What do you suggest? Uh, yeah, if you can quickly. Till I'll you need food. Is this working? Yeah. Till you need food, you'll have to grow crops. And we have not yet, we can't do both things. We can't say that the middle class is increasing and we can't say there's growing hunger. These are two contradictory statements. If we have growing hunger, and if we have a growing population and we need to feed them, then we need to grow crops. And the way to grow crops is to get water into areas, not necessarily, because if you have a GM crop in an area that doesn't have water, it's not going to grow. True. So you have to have water, and there's plenty of stuff, there's plenty of seeds, there's plenty of kinds of crops that will grow. The defining lacuna is water, not the seed. So get the water and you'll grow the crop. Uh, Mr. Spector, you spoke of uh, the ban on BT Brinjal. Um, um, uh, my understanding as a layman read, uh, from the newspapers is that it has not been banned, but that the minister, after his public hearings, found that out of some 22 uh, tests that were supposed to be done, only eight had been completed. Those two not by independent uh, bodies, but entirely by the uh, manufacturers or, or largely by tests done by the manufacturers themselves. And therefore, all that they've said is to go back to the drawing board and complete the tests and then take a review. Um, I dispute those facts. There were dozens of independent tests taken. There have been dozens of independent studies elsewhere too. There's never been a clearer safety profile. And the question here, and it's a legitimate question for people to ask, is when is the risk outweighing the benefit, and when is the benefit good enough to, to let the risk exist? And I don't think those are always clear answers, but in this case, I think it is a pretty clear answer. You know, as I said, with something like soybean or corn, I, it's not improved a lot of life for people, but there are dozens of new products about to come on the market that will help with drought resistance and virus. And the thing about water, I couldn't agree more, but Getting water to the places where we need it is really tough. It can be done, but it can't be done easily. And I think we need to look at other solutions. And this is one of those solutions. I have two questions, one for you and one for Michael. For you, I wanted to ask you that would BT, uh, BT Brinjal have been any more acceptable to you if uh, we did not have a patent issue associated with it and if, like the internet, the technology, the process was thrown open for public use? Uh, so, uh, is, is that more acceptable to you uh, for experimentation with genetic uh, engineering? And for Michael Yu, I wanted to know, uh, someone spoke about the leaks, the laboratory leaks which will always happen. And I usually see those science fiction movies that I'm very fond of and I am sort of convinced that probably if not in my generation, probably in the next generation or the uh, generation next to that, we will actually have a monster which would be created by genetic mutation. So cool. do, you, do, you, do you really have uh, a way of preventing that? Um, since I'll answer mine first because it's quick. Um, the short answer is no. Um, we can destroy the world very easily if we want. People can make batches of smallpox. They're capable of doing that. Um, if we focus on what we're capable of doing with technology, we already have enough technology to destroy the world many times over, cheap technology. So the question is, can we use new technology or the technology we have better? Safety issues will always exist. I don't think it's an answer to say because someone could use something badly, no one should ever use it. Someone you want to? Sure. Um, the question on whether BT Brinjal is acceptable to me is immaterial. The question is, has it been done right? And the answer to that is no. There is something that a lot of people don't know, something that I put out into the public domain several times. 
was the BT approach to controlling the so-called pest of Brinjal at all necessary? The answer is no. The BT gene controls a pest called the caterpillar borer. That's all it does. The main pest of Brinjal and the Brinjal family to which tomato and chili and all of this stuff belongs is not the caterpillar borer. It's a disease called bacterial wilt. So you have this disease for which you're trying to find this problem. That is how corny a lot of times this technology becomes, which does not mean that the technology per se, I mean, I think there are issues with the technology, there are safety concerns here, etc. but that's a matter of science. And there I'll agree with Michael that you have to keep these compartments separate, except for the fact that they don't remain separate in application. If you really wanted to control the pest of Brinjal, you should have found a solution to bacterial wilt, not the caterpillar. And that is how application goes so wrong. You don't have a law for labeling. You don't have a law on liability. You don't have any independent verification of the tests. The protocols are still fairly Neanderthal. Our test protocols for food safety are very, very elementary. So these are the things that does not make you an opponent of a science. I think science and technology must go back to the lab when there are questions and clean it up further till you come to a question, till you come to the situation where you can confidently say, yes, this will work now, or no, we can't get the wrinkles out, like Australia did. The CSIRO in Australia worked for years on peas. And they tried to make a transgenic pea to control a pest of that attacks peas, they were not able to control it because every single time they created this transgenic pea, this genetically engineered pea, and they tested for food safety, there were huge issues. There was inflammation in test animals. Finally, they decided this is not going to work, so shut the door on it. And that is what honest science should do. Test it till you are fairly confident that it is safe, and if, it is, if you can't get the wrinkles out, shut the door. 